Let me invite you to open your worship guide. The text for the hymns is printed there. We're going to sing one stanza of the familiar hymn, Jesus, Keep Me Near the Cross. Please remain seated and join me in singing. Jesus, keep me near the cross, bear a precious fountain, free to all a healing stream, flowed from Calvary's mountain. I'd like to welcome you to our Ash Wednesday service, those of you who are with us in person, those of, us, those of you joining us uh, by means of streaming. Ash Wednesday, of course, is the first day of the season of Lent, Lent being the 40 days that last until Easter Sunday, not including the Sundays between now and then. Ashes, the significance of ashes basically relates to the symbol of humility and repentance that we find throughout the Bible connected to the use of ashes. So as we think about the season of Lent and Christ, uh, the period of Christ's life and ministry in which we find ourselves, it's appropriate for us to examine ourselves and certainly humility and repentance would be appropriate. Lent in particular and the Christian year in general help us to make sure we don't take our faith for granted. And Lent specifically reminds us of the cost of our salvation. During the season of Lent, some Christians find it helpful to simplify their diet or perhaps to give up something else. It helps remind them of what Christ gave up for us. Christ's sacrifice. Others add things during the season of Lent, perhaps the discipline of reading, studying, volunteering, giving to a specific cause. We hope this service proves to be a meaningful way for us to begin the season of Lent together as we journey with Jesus Christ to the cross. A reading from Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgression and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. Purge me from my sin, and I shall be pure. Wash me, and I shall be clean indeed. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Open my lips, O Lord, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to
Our reading from Joel 2. Even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord, your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. All to Jesus I surrender, all to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in his presence. A reading from Psalm 103, verses 1 through 5. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all his benefits, who forgives all your inequity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good as long as you live, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Marvelous grace of our loving Lord, grace that exceeds our sin and our fear. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death even death on a cross.
Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 20. All go to one place, all are from the dust, and to dust all return. Having an Ash Wednesday service during a pandemic stands to me as a stark reminder of this verse. For nearly a year, we have been constantly reminded of our own mortality, our own limitations, and even the fact that all of our great resources can't fix every problem. We are breakable, we get sick, we make mistakes. Even our leaders, regardless of political party, are only human beings doing the best they can. Despite our best efforts, we can be beaten by an enemy we cannot see or smell. We enjoy a Lent that we choose, whether that's giving up Coke or Instagram or chocolate cake for a set time, this is a controlled, personal sacrifice. I myself have viewed Lent in the past more as a personal challenge than as a time of prayer. Lent in some years has been a version of my New Year's resolution honed down to one thing I want to focus on. A New Year's resolution with longer days and a personal challenge to beat. If the past year has shown us anything, it is that suffering is not always chosen. Sacrifice of freedoms and the things we enjoy is not always voluntary and honestly not very welcome. We don't enjoy this involuntary suffering as much. The ground feels unsteady beneath our feet. As Christ followers, this should not be a source of discouragement or of despair or of depression, but a pointed directive away from ourselves and toward Jesus Christ. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 says this about the Christian life. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. In the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. The life we live as Christians, while similar in many ways to those around us, is crucially different in that we are in every area of our lives trying to be closer to Jesus. We are daily engaged in what is known as Paschal spirituality. If you haven't heard that term before, Paschal comes from the Hebrew word Pesach. I'll spell it for you after if you want. Uh, and it is a Hebrew word that our English doesn't translate directly, uh, but it describes the concept of from death to life. So Paschal spirituality would be from death to life spirituality. In this idea, which hopefully is familiar to you, we die to our pride, to our sin, to our falsehood, and even to our false security so that we may live fully and completely in Jesus Christ. This Lenten time is the time in Jesus' story where he turns from all other possibilities and walks to Jerusalem and to his cross. He dies to any future as a husband, as a father, or even as a famous rabbi. He kills those paths, those opportunities, so that the path to the cross can live. He journeys for these 40 days that we begin our observance today to his death on the cross with resurrection on the other side. The Pesach that all others point to, the ultimate death to life that we observe and we celebrate and we welcome on Easter Sunday. If the pandemic has shown us anything, it is that life, in its ups and especially in its downs, is a road best shared. Grief and mourning together need to happen. Jesus journeyed with his closest friends and disciples to the cross. The observance of Lent is the invitation of Jesus himself to walk with him. We take up our crosses, whether we have chosen them or not, and follow after him. We do this as a church together, whether we are in person or digital. We give or we take up something for this Lent time, but this giving or taking only serves to point us to the deeper truth that every day we die to our own selves and we follow Jesus. 
Every day we suffer with him that we might live with him. Every day we look at our present circumstances, whether good or bad, and we ask, how does this get me closer to the Lord who walks to my salvation and to his death? We stay with Jesus these 40 days to remember, to believe, and to love. As we enter into this time of silence, consider these things as you take your ashes. What does walking with Jesus mean for you personally in these 40 days? What must be changed or, to use a church word, repented of in your life? What does your cross look like right now? Meditate on any of the verses provided in your worship guide and listen if God is speaking to you a particular word or phrase that stands out. The ashes symbolize death and repentance. Hold on to them and use them as a reminder to point you to our Savior. Amen. We will now enter into a time of silence. If you would like to come and get ashes, please feel free to do so. Um, I will pray and then we can depart in silence as you wish. Father, thank you for this time. Thank you that even though it is a, a somber, quiet time, that it is a good time. It is a time with you. And that as you begin this 40-day journey, we as a church and as a body of believers can enter into that time with you. Please speak to us and be close to us as we, we seek your face. Give us ears to hear and eyes to see all that you have prepared for us on this road. Thank you that you chose this road and that your son chose to walk this road all those years ago, and that even though it leads to a cross, there is hope in that cross and in that journey. Thank you for the life of your son. In your holy name I pray. Amen.